All right, welcome back to part two of this uh, discussion on convolution and filtering. Uh, this time we're going to start talking about processing real-time signals. So let's jump into that. Uh, these signals have to be sampled uh, or processed as the samples become available. We can only have a few samples in memory at any given time. Um, I have several diagrams like the one shown here to show that illustrate um, how the convolution or the filtering is done. Um, in this example, notice that the samples of the impulse response are in time reversed order, and therefore the data. So, um, so what we have to do is allocate memory for the impulse response, and then we allocate the same number of samples uh, and same number of memory locations for the data. So, what we're going to do is just have the data sliding across this array. Um, and at each time, uh, we will do a multiply, 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 and accumulate that to produce the output. So at time uh, minus one, before we s shift any data into our array, um, the array is initialized to be all zeros. Then at time zero, the first sample shows up. I've colored the first sample in uh, red so that we can keep track of it as it shifts across the array. But um, notice here that time zero, if we multiply the impulse response coefficients with uh, the values in the data buffer, so I'll call this the data buffer, um, we'll have h0 times y, x0, and that's the value that we know um, ends up in, in the first sample of the output, y0. Then at time, y, at time 1, y1 is equal to h0 times x1 plus h1 times x0. And so we see that the, um, the data is shifting into the array at the right. And each time before we shift in a new sample, we have to shift all the other samples in the array over one uh, to the left. And then we can put the newest sample of it, uh, that has become available in at the far right. Uh, at time n, uh, so this is uh, where what we would have in the array at time n, notice that the the samples stored in the array are in uh, what I would call natural order because we have the old samples on the left and the newest sample on the right. Notice that if you multiply um, the, the values in the green array at the top times the values in this array at the bottom um, <coughs> and write that down in summation notation, you will have exactly the convolution formula. So this shows how the data moves through the arrays um, when we're doing convolution or filtering. Um, in this case, again, we had the impulse response in time reversed order and the data in natural order. We can change that around and put the impulse response in um, natural order. And then the, the only difference is that the data shifts from left to right across the array instead of from right to left. So I call, I call all of these techniques, um, I refer to them as using a shift buffer because the samples in the buffer have to shift um, every time we want to process a new incoming sample. And if you, th if you think about that, if, if you have a very long filter, this could be um, an extensive amount of move operations going on just to keep the data shifting through the array. So this code shows um, how we would open a file and just read in a sample. Notice we're only in all the F read statements in this code. We're only reading in one sample at a time and we're reading it into um, the, the zeroth element of the array which is statically allocated and <coughs> so this so the data is as shown on this slide we're reading the newest sample in at the left and all the other values get shifted to the right. Um, this, little this little for loop right here um, shows how we would do a right shift. So you start at the end of the array and um, we would say that the value at the end of the array, array is equal to the value at the beginning of the array. Or, or I'm sorry, value at the end is equal to the value at the end minus one. So we just do a, an adjacent shift to the right and then, and then when we have completed all, those sh all that shifting, all those moves, then we read a new sample into the zeroth element of the array using fread.
So this doesn't do any convolution, but it does show how the data would move through the array. <coughs> uh, now we can add to that the concept of convolution. I don't think there's very much to say here on this slide. I'm going to go ahead and um, move ahead. Um, So here we have the impulse response in natural order, uh, and the data is also is in time reversed order because we have the newest sample on the left, and then the, the data gets older as we move to the right. But if we did a, multi uh, a multiply and accumulate here, we would be producing convolution. You can see the convolution formula here takes impulse response value hk, multiplies that by xn minus k, and you can see that those that alignment is provided in these arrays up above. And um, <clears throat> so if we think of the green as being the H array and the red as being the X array, uh, then we would just essentially do an inner product. Um, we'd multiply H0 times X0. The value in X0 is the most current sample of our input signal. And then the value in x1 is the um, a delayed by one sample version, and so on. But, but anyway, this shows us how we could write that code. Because if you expand out this convolution sum, we see that we need all of these products. And those products are available at these memory locations. So here's a code fragment showing how this might be done. <coughs> um, We have a for loop um, that is doing the accumulation. So we initialize y to be 0. Uh, and then we run our for loop. And we do a multiply accumulate with the plus equal operator. And then after we're done with that, we would shift our values over to get ready for reading in the next sample. So we write out the sample that was just accumulated. And we read in the next sample into the 0 location. So we just continue to do this processing the input one sample at a time until we reach the end of the file and we close the files and we're done. Um, this is accomplishing the same thing, this code fragment, but we have combined the multiply accumulate and the shift into a single loop where we start at the end and work our way from the end back towards the beginning. Uh, we exit the loop before we get to the k equals 0 iteration. Uh, in that case, we don't want to shift anymore. We just want to do the last multiply accumulate operation. And then we write out the sample, read in the new sample. Well, some of you might be thinking that all this moving of data around, all these shifts that have to take place, um, are wasteful. There's no work being done there. It's just simply shifting. And so <coughs> this idea of circular buffering um, eliminates the need to do a shift. So let's take a look at a diagram here that shows how circular buffering works. Again, at time, at time negative 1, our array is empty. At time 0, uh, we would shift in to the array, or not shift, we would write into the array the 0 sample of the signal. At time 1, we write into the array the next sample of the signal, time 2, we write in the next sample, and so on. Notice that in each case, we're writing the samples of the signal into the array, and we don't need to do the shift. So um, the only bit of complexity is that we have to be careful in terms of our indexing. We have to have a circular index. Um, notice that at time 6, we overwrite the, the original sample, x0, with the, the most current input. And we continue to overwrite um, as we process. Let's take a look at how the convolution would work. It becomes a little more complicated this time. Actually, I guess this little chunk of code uh, only shows how we would do the circular indexing. So um, if i represents the index of where we're going to place the next sample that we read in, um, each time we want to decrement that by 1 and then apply a modulo type operation for wrapping the index around when we fall off of the left side. Um, <clears throat> in C, it turns out that 
the modulo operator doesn't work the way you would like it to when you get to negative numbers. And so here, instead of subtracting 1, I subtract m minus 1. And um, after you take the modulo <coughs> m, that's effectively like um, subtracting 1 in a circular fashion. You have to plug in numbers into these formulas to see that that's the case, but that's actually what's happening. And then we read into the array at that position, one sample each time. So this is, this is not really doing convolution. It's only um, just showing how circular indexing would work. To see how the convolution is done, we have to take a closer look at the data array. This is the circular array. Um, we'll assume that the impulse response is in natural order. Um, <coughs> so let's suppose that at time n, the data in the array looks like this. We have um, our index i is pointing to the um, memory location where we have just read in the most current sample. And then, we, and then the samples get older as we move toward the right um, and then in, and move to the right in a circular fashion so that when we move off the end of the array at the right, we wrap around to the left. So the newest and oldest samples are right next to each other um, in the array. Let's take a look and see um, why this, or, or how we would do the indexing to perform convolution in this circular case. So what I've done is I've taken the convolution sum and I've written out all of the terms. And if we look at where um, we could find the product h0 times xn, well h0 is over here, xn is clear over here, um, what we would want to do is um, multiply array element h0 with array element x4 because this is in uh, position x4. Um, so we could do that by adding 4 and then doing modulo 8. And um, I, I've sort of looked ahead and anticipated what's going to happen, so I've inserted the modulo operation here inside the indexing on the x array. And uh, you see a pattern here that you could code into a for loop um, by just uh, shifting by uh, the circular index and then doing a mod operation. Um, when you apply these modulo operations, you get these uh, products that are shown down below. And these are exactly the products that you want because I want h0 times xn. I want h1 times x. I'm sorry, let me back up. h0 times xn, and that's in h0 and x4. So that's the first product here. Then we have we want h1 times xn minus 1. That's going to be obtained through the product of h1 and x5, shown here, and so on and so on and so on. At some point, we wrap around and we want the product of, let's see, um, h4 times xn minus 4. Well, that would normally, in a linear shift array, that would be over here. But now that we're doing circular indexing, that's back over here. So that term is this one. I have h4 times x4 plus 4 mod, that's 4 plus 4 is 8. Mod 8 is actually x0. And so you see that the modulo operation is actually uh, doing the correct circular indexing for us. So let's take a look at a code fragment that would implement convolution in a circular fashion. So here's the core for loop that's doing the multiply accumulate. Um, so we have hk indexed in the normal way. We're indexing starting at 0 and going up to L minus 1. And then we take um, K add I. That's the same that we did in the case for a, cert for a linear array. Um, but then we do modulo L. So this does the circular wrapping for us. And then we, um, I guess I need to, this, there's a mistake here. This plus should be minus. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this is right plus equal, what I want to do is subtract 1 in a circular fashion. And so that is done by adding L and then subtracting 1 and then doing a modulo L operation. <coughs> All right, so that ends the uh, discussion on circular indexing. Um, let me take you to a C program that shows how this is done. <coughs>
Um, it's essentially the same code as before, but instead of allocating a, a large arrays for the data, we allocate an array that for the data that's the same size as the impulse response. So I'm calling my data array um, G. So H is my impulse response. G is holding the data. Um, I have, it looks like I'm doing buffered I.O. here, so I have uh, a statically allocated array for the input and a statically allocated array for the output. Here I'm doing a time reversal of the impulse response. I actually think that that's an error now that I look at that because I'm doing a time reversed circular indexing for my uh, data array and therefore the impulse response should be in natural order, not time reversed order. So I'll make that correction, but um, this code down here shows us what the for loop looks like. Um, the first thing I do to prime the to prime the loop is to read in a block of samples into an in, into a buffer. Um, while there are samples that have been read in, so while the length of that input buffer is greater than zero, I have samples to process. So I loop over every one of the input samples. That's this first for loop. For each input sample, I will insert the new value into my circular array at position k. T is my accumulator, which I initialize to 0. And here's where I do my um, multiply accumulate loop. Notice that my, my, my g array is being indexed in a circular fashion. Once I'm done with the accumulation, I will put that value into the output array. And then uh, this code actually needs to be fixed, it looks like. This should be plus equal LH minus 1. So that does a circular, um, uh, the combination of these. Oh, actually, I guess uh, it looks like it was fine the way it was. Because the next line adds LH and then does modulo LH. And again, that's just to handle the case where when we decrement from 0 to negative 1, modulo doesn't work correctly in that case. So um, anyway, this, this uh, should work. And I think I will end the recording now at this point.